Okay, it's on. Hi everyone. Um, we're going to do a little kind of stall until Hosley makes it here for his talk. Um, Jeff Cutler. Hi everyone. He runs, how many blogs do you run? I have 21 blogs. I keep about between eight and a dozen of them current. I'm also doing some blogging for Fortune 100 companies. And tying into what Hoseline's topic is, these companies recognize that blogging can be the core to their communications and social media strategy. So what Reiko and I were going to talk about, or just open the floor to, were just questions about social media, blogging, and sort of kill some time until Hoseline gets to the stage. So if anybody has any pressing questions or has some thoughts that they want to discuss, we're open for that. What do you write about in 21 blogs? The, the <laughs> blogs vary. They all have different topics. Um, I guess the top five off the top of my head, one is a social media blog. It's jeffcutler.com slash jeff, and I cover social media news and anything going on in the space. Talk about Google+, Plus. talk about any of the tools. Uh, things to worry about .com is a site that is just based on anyone's paranoia. Anything that might happen to you, slipping and falling in the shower, finding a spider in your shoe, just anything that might drive you over the edge. Most of them end in death, so I wouldn't read them first thing in the morning. <laughs> um, that's things to worry about .com. I have What Would Jeff Cutler Eat, which is www.jce.com, and that's just photos of a lot of my meals. When you talk about using blogs as a business strategy, that blog itself has been sponsored because I'll sell links to each post at 10 bucks a link, but over the course of a week, that's 210 bucks. And yesterday, you probably heard Chris Penn talking about beer money with your affiliate marketing on your blogs. Well, 210 bucks is a little better than bad beer money, but it just depends what you're using the money for. I use it to eat, so it's a little, I think it evens out. I also have bowlofcheese.com, and in, I guess, deference to the Tour de France, which ends today, I also own uh, bowldefromage.com. I didn't get the .fr, but that is just a, a blog that's about random everything. I went on a rant once about Heifer International and how it was a little annoying to me that you couldn't buy the whole cow. You had to buy a piece of it and share it with other people. So that was one of the topics there. And I have podcasts that go off of the Bowl, uh, bowl of Cheese site. I have a With Jeff site that has a social media calendar in the Boston area and it also talks about places I've been. I have thegadgetreporter.com. I cover the Consumer Electronics Show every year. Go look at new technology and figure stuff out. I get gadgets like cases from Otterbox, which I'll, I'll swear by because I use them. But just different cases for phones, iPads, computers. Um, different technology for doing anything. GPSs. Um, i trying to think of a few of the others. I, I have a few that are on WordPress itself. A number of them are WordPress self-hosted and a number are on Blogger. And one of the cool things about the conference is finding out about multi-site because I think that's my next move. Pulling everything in and last night if you were at the party watching the WordPress TV, Kurt talked about a plugin that you can get a Tumblr blog pulled over to your WordPress site. And it's uh, I think it's, tum is it Tumblr or TM, Tumblr, the numeral 2 WP. So it's Tumblr to WordPress and it's, he says it's a great plugin and because I have a few sites that are Tumblr blogs and posterous blogs, why not bring them over to a, a WordPress self-hosted and maintain control? So. That's a question over here. I write all of it. I mean, how? I just sit down and write it. But I've been a journalist for 21 years. So depending on what topic comes to mind, I'll sit and write it. And I'm not blogging every day. I'm not doing a Chris Brogan thing where you're, you're putting out a post or two every day of the year, which I think that should sap anyone's creativity unless you've been doing it for a while. But having been a journalist for 21 years, worked for 
NPR and BZ and Technology Review and just a number of different publications, I've honed that skill set to be able to write that stuff. And it's just a matter of, as everyone said, that uh, has given a presentation on content, it comes back to knowing your audience, so knowing what they want to read. And if I can put my, myself into the shoes of someone who is skittish and paranoid, well then I have the things to worry about posts that I can throw up there. And if I can think about fine food and going out to eat, then I have something for what would Jeff Cutler eat or any of these other, other sites. So how many people here ha are, have a blog and are writing on it? Great. What's the biggest challenge you guys face when you're trying to create content for your blogs? Um, the scheduling time to write for the blogs. Why don't you repeat it? What she's saying is scheduling time to write for the blogs. Anyone else? The biggest challenge in writing content for your sites? Sometimes the content can be choosing the right content. I'm in the thermal physics space and so we write professionally. So sometimes the, it's hard not to have content that's you know, way out there and sometimes it's tough to get content on. You know, it's like He's talking about it's tough when writing for a thermal physics or a thermal physics audience to get content that's applicable to the entire audience. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I think a lot of blogs are successful because they've found their niche audience. They've found the handful of people or dozens of people or hundreds of people that are going to read that. You don't need to be uh, a Huffington Post that appeals to a ton of people as long as you're the expert in your field, which then goes back to using social media vehicles or blogs for making a living and doing something that's going to bring some revenue in because if you're the expert in that field, people are going to go find you. So. Talk about selling links to the blog. Essentially, I would just put in each post down the bottom if people wanted to have their link included, just email me and ask me about the rates and contact me. And I had Boston Center for Adult Ed do it and I've had a couple other little brands do it. It's not something I'm living off of, but it, uh, it was kind of fun to get that, that notice. I think the other thing, we started to talk about social media. The other thing social media can do for you is allow you to reach out to different brands. And I, how many of you have seen the Wheat Thins Crunches calling ads? Okay, Wheat Thins has a uh, a Twitter handle called Crunch is Calling. And they've been running ads on TV, but since everyone here DVRs or Netflix or doesn't watch TV in a traditional way, you haven't seen the ads. What they do is send a van out to people's houses who have tweeted to them, and they bring a pallet of wheat thins and drop them off at the door and pull them out. It's almost like the publisher's clearinghouse of old, but they're bringing them crackers. So I sent out a bunch of tweets to Crunch's Calling because I like to eat, and I thought, well, what will happen here? Will there be any engagement? Will the company figure out that I have some affinity for the brand and they wanted to make a connection? Well, they re replied to me and said, well, we're not going to send our truck down to Hingham, but we're going to send you three of our newest products in a box, and they sent a handwritten note, and they showed up, and what they got out of that was me garnering or me having more affinity for the brand but also blogging about it. So I did a whole video unboxing of the, the wheat thin sticks. They have chipotle and they have a, a sugar cinnamon and then the regular flavor and I unboxed the whole thing and now it's out there and any audience I had on my blogs are now following them. So again that's a that's a social strategy not not from a blog standpoint by wheat thins but maybe on a microblog social media standpoint. What are your favorite blogs? What blogs do you read on a daily basis? <laughs> uh, what are my favorite blogs and what blogs do I read on a daily basis? I think it really depends on the time of year. And I say that because I mentioned the Tour de France ending today. I've been reading only tour blogs for the past three weeks. And one of my blogs is also followthetour.com. I blog about that every day. But during it, the tour. Yeah, during the tour. And then <laughs> I'll blog again about it. Now I'm done for this year or for this race. I'll blog about it again 
probably after the Volta de España and then when they pick the course in October. And then maybe again around New Year's and then when it kicks off again. But it really depends. I look at Mashable an awful lot. If you, if you want to know anything about social media, you should have Mashable in your bookmarks. Um, even though it can be overwhelming. Yeah, even though <laughs> it can inundate you with too much information. I get uh, Chris Brogan's blog emailed to me. A lot of blogs, as Chris Penn mentioned yesterday, you can subscribe via email and just get that to come to your inbox. So when I check my tweets in the morning on the iPhone, I'll have an email from Brogan's blog and it'll tell me what he wrote about. So I just saw another hand. Over here. Oh. How do I spell Mashable? Mash, A B L E dot com. Mm. What are my thoughts on monetizing my blog with ads versus watering down the reader experience by having them on the blog? Um, I was on a radio show the other day, uh, it's Everything Internet Radio, and they asked me a similar question. They said, uh, they came at it from another point of view because they were looking at one of my blogs where I had linked out to different brands without having any, no uh, compensation to do so, but I linked out just because I liked the brands and they were pertinent to the topic I was writing about. I think the best way to get money on a blog is probably sponsorship, if you can do it, or a higher level affiliate marketing. I don't know that AdSense ads work. I don't know that Amazon really works. There are people that swear by it, but you're not going to find many people who you can actually talk to who have made a lot of money by putting ads on their blog. But it goes back to if you have a very specific blog topic and you're the expert in that field, then you, uh, you have a good platform to stand on. How long do you need? Okay. We got Rosaline here and we're going to hand it over to him. So a little round of applause. Sorry guys. I love my people, but Puerto Rican parade took over the whole city. <laughs> so uh, let's get this going. And we'll have this back here for questions. I'll run it to wherever. If you guys have a question, raise your hand. We'll bring the microphone to you. You're So what we're going to have is a, like an open discussion on um, blogging and how it's central to your social media strategy. Um, this is the agenda. Who am I? What is social media as, as a whole? How does blogging fit into that? Uh, we're gonna, I have a blog success guide that I'm going to give you after this presentation. Um, and I'm going to talk about how knowing all these things helped generate 4,000 page views on one blog post for an intern at the very end. So, let us begin. Who am I? This is what I've done. Um, I don't really care. Some stats, a bunch of numbers. Um, say again, thank you. Oh, can you hear me okay? Oh, all right, much better, okay. So, this just means I've been on quite a bit. All right, social media. Um, the biggest thing about social media is that it's just not one thing anymore. It's a variety of things. Many of you have already probably seen this site, but I'm going to refresh your memory. So this is a caption of social media. It's an array of tools from a variety of different perspectives. So documents, music, 
social bookmarking. Some of them are, are more used than others. Um, but as you also notice that there's platforms over here. But all these things are what's considered social media. So how does a blog, in particular your blog, fit into this social media landscape? Well, that's your blog. Your, your blog is the, the, the center of it all. Um, and we're gonna highlight that in the actual um, case study later on, but this is something not to neglect. Because if you don't have a blog, you're missing the boat. You're missing the opportunity to connect with people. You can only speak, uh, say on Twitter, 140 characters. It's only an essence of who you are, what your business, what your brand is. Um, if you have Facebook, you can only do so much. But realize that the majority of these things here are free. And there's been cases where Twitter has removed everyone's following. So there is a great deal of investment um, that's taken with social media. But one of the things to consider is that if you're just on these platforms, then you're missing out on the greater cause, what you really are about, either from a personal branding perspective or from a business perspective. So all these things are great because they are like a community. So think of all these things as a community. So next, I just want to really emphasize that social media are essentially just tools to communicate. That's it. There's nothing beyond that. It, it happened way back when, when Amazon started giving you um, recommendations from people that you did not know. Um, you read this book, so-and-so that read this book actually recommends and read this book was probably one of the first to actually implement this strategy of leveraging other people or other things. So what did Facebook do? Facebook took your friends and family and added credibility to a certain subject, sub, uh, subject and things like that. But at its core, social media is really about this, sharing. Now this becomes important, especially if you blog. Because if you blog the right way, quote unquote, the people are more likely to share your content. So this becomes the essence of it all. So if you see this kid, he's sharing, maybe because it was forced by his parents, but that's one of the things you have to consider. If you consider your audience first, people will naturally find you and share your information versus you're trying to get attention, provide value, give, live, leave something valuable that people will want to share. Now there's a certain strategy, we'll go over some of those things, but this is the essence of Twitter. When you ever try to explain Twitter, what is it? It's pretty much a bunch of people talking, some people are yelling and ranting and raving, other people are just listening, they don't make any updates at all. Other people are just listening, other people are talking, other people are taking notes. Now this becomes you, this should be you. Taking notes, kind of digesting this, whatever it is that your, has your attention at that moment, and then kind of streaming it down to its essence. If you're able to do that, if you're able to capture that and put it on a blog and then share that, the likelihood of that being shared is higher. Does this make sense so far? Am I going too fast, too slow? I have two speeds, which is fast and Dominican. So when I get really passionate, talk Dominican. So. A lot of this stuff isn't necessarily rocket science, but what happens is that a new tool is introduced and we get too swept up on the tool. And that's why this discussion isn't really about the plugin. It, it really isn't about the gadget that you put on your, your site. It's really about the core essence of information and how do you condense that to something that's valuable so that you develop your own personal reputation, your own personal brand, either for yourself again or for your business. So social media isn't new media, but it's now media. This becomes extremely important in the case study because right now there's a lot of things that are happening. But sometimes if you write a piece of content that's too topical, it gets swept away. How many people know what evergreen content is? Very good. So for those that don't know, 
Um, I'm just going to make it up because you don't know. No. Um, evergreen content is content that's always green, that you could continuously reuse. So when you're looking at a blog post and you're writing about something topical, think about the fact that will someone care about this subject tomorrow, next week, next month, a year from now? Because if they don't, then that kind of piece of content can get swept away. Now, why would you want to do this? Because you want to reuse that same content later on. For example, someone could have been writing a blog post on rock stars that passed away at 27. This week, they're probably getting a lot of visibility because if you haven't noticed, uh, Amy Winehouse passed away at 27, joining this Club 27 group of Kurt Cobain and all these other folks. Now, if they would have just not titled it 27 or anything like that, they would have missed the, that opportunity to um, get that additional attention to talk about th that issue of 27. Does that make sense? Very good. So, we're all familiar with the big three, uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. However, going back to that chart, one of the first things you have to, to do, or I recommend doing, is find out where your audience is. They might not be here. So that plays a vital role in how you create your blog and how you set up your blog. And that, once you do that research, allows you to determine what widgets and gadgets and plugins to load on your blog. Because if your industry still isn't mature yet in a certain um, you know, area where you could leverage, a, say, a, a Twitter, a lot of people, I think for the majority, it's safe to say Twitter works, but maybe it's, it's not mature for Facebook. Maybe you put in the LinkedIn widget, but you won't know that until you start realizing these other options. So first, let's look at the industry itself. So these are just the state of the blogosphere. So it's important to know this so that you know where you fit in into this weave, this web. So here what you're looking at, this is how often people post. This is the... Um, uh, the data here, the key. So if you notice, two to three times a week, it's 27%. This is looking at blogs as a whole. One time a week, 27%. So you don't have to feel that pressure to create content all the time. You also have to look at the type of content that you create. If it's just once a week, it might be a little bit richer content. You, you spend more time making the post longer. It becomes more um, like a case study or a research document. Also, let's take a look. Um, one a week, one every few weeks. Still 23%, so you're still very high. Again, this is all relative to your industry. So this is the industry as a whole, but you have to look at this in context of where your focus at. Who is your audience? Also, the majority of the uh, blogs are still in the United States. Um, ages, they range 25% are in this audit, uh, orange, 25 to 34. Uh, 35 to 34, um, it's here, it's 29%. So it's still a very chunk, a big, big group of folks here um, between 25 and 44 that you could capture simply by blogging. Gender, um, more males on currently. Um, also, you start taking a look at this up here. This becomes very important because it lets you know how these are actually being indexed in search engines and things like that. And another thing to note is only 4% of the entire universe of bloggers are professional bloggers, which is what they do. A good 9% are self-employed. And um, here, 72% are still hobbyists, or so they're doing it recreationally. So you have to take a look at that in the context of your own personal brand as well as the industry that you um, are focused on. Here, this is very important. What they did is these are the top 10 um, blog sites. How many people know of Technorati? Very good. You should if you're coming to a blogging conference. Um, so why I listed this, even though these tend to be a little bit more kind of universal and maybe focused on particular industries, Mashable, Gizmodo, TechCrunch, these are all kind of geeky, nerdy, social media type blogs. The reason why I mentioned them is that they leave breadcrumbs of success. They indicate how often their content is shared, and that's readily available. So in the case study that I go into, I talk about specifically how I was able to, to almost predict that I was going to get, not me, and you'll find out later on, 
a high degree of shareability with the blog post that we put up. It was almost scientific. It's almost too easy. And I'll explain why. So this is good. So even though you might not be involved with TMZ, TMZ might be able to give you a headline. A quick tip. I just uh, had a conversation with someone. What they do when they write a blog post is they send out three tweets with different headlines. And what they do is the headline that gets retweeted the most, they retitle that blog post that because that was the most commonly shared item. So that's a quick tip when you're creating a blog post and you're trying to get more visibility. Uh, so one of the things about TMZ is it's, it's celebrity news, but their, their headlines are very, um, are written in a way to capture your attention. So leverage that. Leverage the fact that they're dedicated staff, copywriters, that create headlines for, for a living. Also think, what are tweets but just a bunch of headlines? Because, you know, the, the better the tweet, the better it was articulated what the idea is. Does this make sense? Is this helpful so far? Is this what you like, were expecting? This makes sense? Yeah? All right. I can't check my tweets, so hopefully it's good. So the first number one thing, what we just went over is research. So I just researched the top blogs, but now it's time for you to research your industry. Uh, and here are some items that I would recommend um, researching. So number one, again, industry news. The latest industry news. Because if you're the first to go out there, that puts you ahead of the pack. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to be the head of, of, of everyone. Like for examples, I've started to network with a bunch of food bloggers. How many people have a food blog out there? No? One? Couple? So a lot of times when you go, and it's funny to go to an event with food bloggers because um, they always present the meal and the first thing they do is take out their camera and take pictures all over the place and it's, it's just crazy. Um, and they have a way to eat it so the food doesn't drop. It was, it was a sight to be seen. But one of the things is that sometimes food bloggers are so eager to put stuff out there that it's, it's almost, it dilutes it. They don't, it's almost like the, some of them, not all of them, but um, there's, there's like a catch-22 with the speed. If you write too fast, how, how deep did you really think about what you wrote? And those, but there's a certain window in which you have to put it out there because it becomes stale. No pun intended with the food. But anyway, um, so the other thing is influencers. Who is in your space? More importantly, who is in your space that is active on social media? This becomes important when I reference the, the case study. It's leverage. Competition. What is your competition? In a horse race, the difference between the first place and the second place could just be a nose, but the prize could be pretty much sub greater than that 50% or 100%. So that's something to, to consider. Look at what your competition is doing. And I can't read that, but um, <laughs> five minutes. Okay, let me go through this. So these slides are going to be up, but look at past success. Um, Create lists of success. Um, lists, create a list for your industry. Create a how-to for your industry. Uh, backlinks, this is something important. This is like if someone else has a blog and you reference them, make sure you to backlink them and then leverage them when you send that information out into social media. So this is part of the blog success kit. Something, some things to think about. I'm not gonna go over them, but this kit that I provide at the end uh, for free, Let's you start thinking of the blog as a business, as opposed to a place to install all the widgets and the gadgets and the, the, all those plugins. So some of the things is, you know, um, what do I hope the outcome of the starting a blog will be? How do I see my blog developing over the next three years? So if you're thinking long term, it gives you much more perspectives on those widgets and the gadgets. Again, all this stuff is going to be online. I'm going to provide the, the link to the kit so you can download it. No need to really go into it. I was just trying to get your mind thinking a little differently about blogging. Who is my intended audience for the blog? That should be pretty straightforward. So let's get into the case study. So the number one thing that I did is I went to Mashable. And one of the things that I did is I noticed one week that this particular blog post generated 170% more retweets or tweets and 907 more likes. And that struck me as something very interesting. I'm like, how could I leverage this information? So the first thing is it's, it's how-to. And then I'm like, okay, it's a how-to. These, these guys have a lot of how-tos. So 
I went to this how-to post, and all they did was create a how-to set up a Foursquare special. Now, when I went to it, the majority of the blog post was just screenshots. I'm like, what is this? This really was effective for them. So, as you see, all they took is screenshots and just listed things one by one, but for some reason, in social media, this hit. So, I said, I could do that. That's a formula. It's, a, it's, it's proven. So the first thing I did, I did the research. And what happened is one day there was this announcement on a Wednesday. Cloud announces an integration with Facebook. Um, and they use this tool called Involver. So again, this was on a Wednesday. It was pretty cool. Step two, I took action. But I wanted to make it that much more effective. I wanted to create a good case study. So I didn't create it. Interns. Now, I did this for a couple of different reasons, and you'll know later on, but I could have done it. It was pretty straightforward, but I wanted to leverage. I had a lot of work. I got the intern to do it. What do they do? They just went here, and they just created the same thing. Just a bunch of screenshots. Step three, socialized it. What did I do with that? So we tweeted it. We knew that clout is extremely social. So what do we do? Notice, our, oh, sorry. Notice the following, 4,000. Notice Cloud's following, 122,000. And they wrote, how to make a Cloud coupon for Facebook fan page. Great write-up by 451 Heat. Wonderful. Done. It's been retweeted 35 times, including myself. I had to. It's my stuff. Um, so next, you measured it, i.e., what did you learn from this experience? So, what did we learn is that this was a hot topic. So that was the actual um, tweet, 35, 3,475 views in the first 24 hours, 4,072 in the last 48 hours. Bounce rate was 2.8% over the last 50 tweets, over 59,000 impressions. What was great about this is this was the intern's first blog post. Now, do you think she's motivated to do more blog posts now? Now she has a bar that she has to go. Um, but, but the added effect is if you do 451 Heat, it's listed as one of our top links on the website. And this was just recently. So this is 27th. This is going back to 2009, 2010. Again, we created these little strategies to be seen. So this is another one. The other thing is for Cloud Coupon, we're also top five, top six. On instantaneous recognition because of social media. Again, I can't read that. What does it say? Two minutes. Fantastic. Um, so, clock coupon. So, again, create the blog post, do the research, put the blog post out, socialize it, do the measurement, gets indexed in Google, evergreen content because this is months ago and it's going to probably stay there because there's not a lot of people creating that because in social media, sometimes it's the first person out the gate that creates something because everyone says, if they created it, why are we going to create it? So that's something to think about. It doesn't work in all industries, but something to think about. So step five, this is the lesson. This is why I wanted to have the intern write it, because they were interns still in school, and I wanted to build up their social credentials. So she wrote a blog post on how she did it. Now people are looking at her, even though she's still in college, as an influencer, as an educator, as a thought leader. So again, if you have interns, give them the opportunity to shine. So this is extra bonus because I was late. I threw that in. Um, but here you go. She wrote about the whole experience. Um, so that's something to consider. So if you want the blog success kit that goes over those questions, you go here. Remember, this is case sensitive. Uh, bit.ly slash WCBOS, all lowercase, capital B. SK Blog Success Kit, all capitals. Um, go there, you download it for free. It's like four pages. It kind of just helps you streamline your blog. Um, that is it, my peoples. <laughs> Questions? Was this helpful? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. So, any questions? Yes. Um, I just, uh, um, yeah, thanks. It was really interesting. Um, I'm just starting a blog. I'm a freelance writer and editor, and I'm just starting a blog, just getting it on Twitter, literally. 
Um, you know, how, can you talk a little bit about starting up? Because I don't think I want to do something like that right now necessarily, because I have no, I have like four posts, you know? But, but, get it, but getting started. What are you writing about? Um, Writing and editing language issues. Um, so this kit, I'll go through it right now. Hopefully people could see it. Uh, let me maximize it. So this, the reason why I created this is because of those questions. Basically, why do you want to do it? Why do you want to create the blog? And I created a, I don't know if you ever had this done, but this is a fillable PDF. That means you can just write all your stuff here. Um, and it's just a little guide. I set it up for my clients so you could print it and send it to me, but you don't have to do that. You could just fill it out. What do you hope your outcome of the blog will be? Um, why would I be blogging for myself or someone else? So if you fill this out, it'll give you a much better sense of what you're trying to do. It'll put things into context. That's exactly why I want to create this because people started t focusing too much on themes and too much on like widgets and gadgets and it's a distraction from the business of blogging. They also talk about in here, um, I'll go through this real quick. Uh, next page also talks about the blog title. I'll make it big so you can read it. Um, you know, who's your audience? Who's your competition? The blog title, the design, the call to action, what do you want people to do? So if you fill this out, you get a better sense because it forces you to think about it. And I think that would be uh, something that would be very beneficial to you just when you're starting. Then it also, at the very end, it gives you a sense of, you know, what are your goals of the blog? How often do you want to write? Um, how quickly do you want to respond to someone that comments on your blog? Does that make sense? Cool. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, next door. And then you. So you mentioned that social media is just a tool. My question is, um, what makes blogs the center of the strategy as opposed to perhaps another tool online? Um, all, the, all the social media tools that I referenced before, you don't control. You have no control over them. They can shut you down. It's free. Um, you can only express your genius in 140 characters, and that's just not enough. Um, right? So you, you give people the essence of who and the genius within you and then you lead them to, to discover more about you. So you have contact information if you're a speaker. You have your past work, your case studies, your portfolio. It's more active. It also gets indexed more. So then now you start getting referenced and backlinks. So that gives you a lot more control because now you start, even though email could be like Consider dead, it's the core of who you are because that's a direct link to your audience. So the blog post becomes newsletter content and, and it lets you establish a foundation. That's why it's so critical to any other social media activity. Um, does that make sense? Cool, I think. Sorry. One more? Okay, good. All right. So I'll be around. Apologize for the lateness. Hopefully, this has been helpful. And uh, go to the blog kit, download it. That's it. Thank you very much.